Hello everyone, welcome back to Steward Technologies. In the last video, I derived the robot's kinematics and I implemented joint interpolated motion. If you missed the video, you can click the card in the corner to catch up. This time I'll be taking a step back from the software to work on the gripper design and hopefully get a functional prototype working. So without further ado, let's get started. Based on my research, I found there to be four main types of robot grippers. Vacuum grippers, pneumatic grippers, hydraulic grippers, and electric grippers. Each of them have their own subtypes and configurations. For my robot, I'll be going with an electric gripper, more specifically, a servo-based gripper. For simplicity, I'll be designing a two-finger parallel gripper. It's called a parallel gripper since the two fingers on the gripper remain parallel to each other as the gripper opens and closes. The parallel gripper uses a four bar linkage to actuate the fingers of the gripper. By making all the bars the same length, the mechanism forms a parallelogram shape that keeps the fingers moving in parallel to each other. Before we jump right into the CAD work for the gripper, I have to take a step back and think about how I'm going to attach the gripper to the robot. You may recall in the first video of this series, I mentioned I want the robot to be general purpose and have modular end effectors. Flashback. I wanted the end effector of the robot to be modular. I wanted to build a general purpose robot. End of flashback. Most commercial robots have something called an end effector plate attached to the end of their robot. This plate allows them to install a wide variety of tools to the end of their robot. This grants a single robot the ability to perform several tasks such as pick and place assembly, welding, and even bartending, oddly enough. There's an industrial standard for robot end effector plates, but to keep things simple, I'll be designing my own in Fusion 360. The design is straightforward. In the body for joint six, there's space for a bearing to fit that'll keep everything aligned. The plate gets attached to the stepper motor using a mounting hub I picked up from Pololu. And on the top of the plate, there are four holes meant to hold four M3 inserts that will allow whatever tool I design to be secured to it. Printing and assembling the end effector plate is pretty straightforward. It might not seem like much, but getting this part of the design out of the way early allows me to focus on the more exciting and arguably frustrating part of this build, the gripper. For the first iteration of my design, I decided not to include the servo motor. At this point in the design process, I just want to get the mechanism working before I do that. After printing and assembling the gripper, I realized the linkages weren't parallel to each other. This meant that when it opened and closed, the fingers of the gripper wouldn't remain parallel to each other. I fixed that issue in the second iteration by changing the length of the linkages and the distance between the pivot points. I noticed with this iteration that the fingers had a very limited range of motion. It couldn't close that far, but it could open much wider than necessary. Playing around with the design in Fusion 360 revealed that the distance between the fingers could be increased or decreased based on how far I adjust the distance between the pivot points for the linkages. With this information in mind, I then moved on to the next iteration. This time I'll be adding in the mount for the servo motor so that the entire gripper can be actuated electronically. The bottom two pivot points will have spur gears to keep both of the gripper fingers moving in sync. The servo motor will be fixed to one of these pivot points and in turn will actuate the entire gripper. The gripper is being driven by this 9 gram micro servo with a servo horn attached. The servo horn is fitted onto the bottom left linkage and drives the entire mechanism. As expected, when I change the angle of the servo, the fingers of the gripper open and close. Even though the mechanism is working as expected, it still leaves a lot to be desired. The servo that I'm using is barely strong enough to properly actuate the gripper. With even the tiniest bit of resistance, the servo stalls and the gripper doesn't close. 
I tried using another servo I had, but the results were the same. To get the performance I want from this gripper, I'll likely need to use a larger servo motor to drive it, along with a better way to mount the linkages with minimal friction. Regardless, I'm happy with the progress I made this video. Next time I should be able to fix those issues and design the rest of the gripper body to fit onto the robot's end effector plate. The gripper prototype still needs some work before it's ready to be mounted to the robot. Unfortunately, that'll have to wait until the larger servo motor and some other parts arrive in the mail. In the meantime, I'll get back to working on the software and maybe even some ROS integration. If you have any questions or comments about the project so far, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, share it with a friend and make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.